Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Howie Heckman. I'm one of the developers here at PTS. And today I have the uh, privilege of showing you guys the new Clearstream 4.1 and some of the new features that we're including with the product uh, due out this month, uh, so it'll be up on our website soon. I'll kind of go through a live demonstration of the features uh, as, well as, talk, as well as talk about them a little bit before we get underway. Uh, as always, we will have a question and answer period at the end of the webinar. So as I'm going through any of this stuff, if you guys have any questions, or even if you have any other questions regarding Clearstream that I may not be touching on today, please feel free to send them over in the question panel. Um, if, uh, as always, if I don't get to everything today, uh, if you want to reach out to us, I'll have our contact information up at the end of the webinar uh, to uh, reach out to us with any additional questions you guys may have that I don't happen to get to in the webinar, or if it's something that you uh, come across as you're using Clearstream uh, after the webinar today. So with that, I always like to start just uh, for people that may not be completely familiar with Clearstream RFID, just what is Clearstream RFID, uh, the application itself, um, outside of the version 4.1 upgrade. Uh, Clearstream RFID is really what we think is the simplest to use uh, fixed RFID solution to get fixed RFID readers up and running re uh, relatively quickly uh, into pre-existing databases, text files, or spreadsheets. So you can, uh, through a simple user interface, add fixed RFID readers to the Clearstream RFID product, which I'll show you in just a little bit here, and then map those uh, RFID readers to a pre-existing database or wherever you really want that tag information to go. So it allows you to take a system that may be used for uh, fixed asset tracking or inventory or um, work in process or stockroom checking and really add fixed RFID uh, reading to that system. So maybe it's just something that you're doing manual entry for, maybe you're currently using barcode scanning or mobile RFID. Uh, Clearstream allows you to add fixed RFID readers to that, uh, to that environment, to that system. Uh, again, the benefits of Clearstream RFID, there's no programming involved uh, and really we, we strive to make it uh, as easy as to use and um, as quick to use as possible to get up and running with fixed RFID readers. Uh, we also give you many different features for controlling how and when these readers are scanning for tags, uh, what triggers them, and a bunch of that I'll be actually talking about today with uh, version 4.1 for some of the new features uh, for controlling tag reads. Uh, and again, you can send the tag information to a number of different data sources, so an ODBC database it could be something like Oracle, uh, Microsoft Access, uh, SQL Server, anything like that, MySQL, uh, you can send your tag information, or just a simple Excel or text files for certain cases uh, of using Clearstream RFID. Uh, so you have a lot of flexibility in where that tag information is going. So again, in all, it's a, there's no programming. You can quickly add fixed RFID readers to the environment, configure when they're scanning for tags, and where those tags are being sent to on the back end in your uh, database or uh, wherever you need that tag information to go. Okay, so but before I jump into the uh, the new features of 4.1, I would just like to mention uh, all of the stuff that I show you here today, minus the version 4.1 features, uh, unless you reach out to us, we can send you that build, uh, are available for free trial at our website. So if you go to clearstreamrfid.com, uh, up on the top there, the take a trial or anywhere, it looks like you see an, an orange button, Go ahead and click that link and you can download the software and trial everything that I show you today. If uh, you're someone that's already using Clearstream RFID and want to see and use the version 4.1 features, please just shoot us an email after the, the uh, webinar today and we would be glad to get you uh, a link to the software, a uh, pre-release pre link, uh, so that you can download and trial everything I show you. Okay, with that let me just jump back into the PowerPoint. And I have to switch the screens here. Okay, so what's new in version 4.1? Uh, the biggest thing in version 4.1, looks like I have a bad screenshot here, but the biggest thing is uh, the tag events and moderated tag reads. Now, I'm going to show you how this works because it's a little bit hard to explain and the name of it is uh, a little bit hard to understand, I guess, but really what it allows you to do is <clears throat> change how and when tags are reported to your database. So in your standard Clearstream 4.0 and prior releases, when a tag is scanned by an RFID reader, it's sent to the database to be posted as a tag. So if a tag goes through a portal, it gets scanned going through the portal. The readers then send the tag to Clearstream. Clearstream takes that tag information and posts it back to your database. Uh, so you get that uh, tag read sent to the database when that tag was scanned. 
Now, depending on how you set that up, you can have a tag that's sitting in front of that portal and getting scanned many, many, many times. So it keeps scanning that tag because it's sitting in front of that portal. And it's really just sending that tag information to the database. Now, unless you do stuff on the database side, you're going to get a whole bunch of tag reads into the database. So depending on how long it sits there, the tag is being sent to the database. And that event is basically a tag read. The fixed RFID re reader read that tag, scanned that tag, and sent it to the database. Well, with Clearstream 4.0, we allow you to define and control those tag events. So not only can you report when a tag is seen, but you can also report when a tag is no longer seen. So let's say a tag comes in into that portal, it's scanned, that's a tag seen event. But it may then go through the portal completely and it goes out of the goes away from that RFID reader and it's no longer seen. Now with the older versions of Clearstream, you really you got that tag read, but you don't really know that it left other than it's not being scanned any longer. Now with Clearstream 4.1, we actually give you the ability to uh, report that, hey, this tag is no longer in front of the, the reader. So you can, based on your settings, get a tag read when it first comes to the portal and get another tag posted to your database when it leaves the portal. So you get two tag reads for that tag uh, based on when it first was seen by the readers and when it was no longer seen by the readers. And a lot of use cases for this might be like a work in process type application where you want to keep track of how long an item is at, say, a workstation. Uh, being assembled or being uh, put together or something like that. You want to get a tag event when it first shows up at that port at that workstation and then get another tag event when it leaves that workstation. So you get two timestamps of how long that tag was at the workstation. Um, so that's those two events there, tag seen and tag no longer seen. And you can now configure those within Clearstream uh, to report those to your database. <clears throat> On top of that, we also have uh, tag timeouts, which allows you to report a tag once every X number of seconds. Uh, so that can basically say, I don't necessarily want to report this tag every time it's seen by the reader because it's just sitting in front of the reader. So you can define a timeout that basically says, if this tag is scanned, don't tell me about it again until X number of seconds, so say 15 seconds it's sitting in front of that antenna. I don't really care about it for the next 15 seconds, so don't tell me about it for that length of time. And that's a, that's a settable property that you can define in Clearstream and set it for as long as you'd like. But so really allows you to control how often the tag is scanned. And I'll show you a demonstration of that in just a little bit here. Uh, the final thing is actually customized events. So the, the default events are tag seen and tag no longer seen. But we can also do customized events that allows you to report a tag based on some sequence of events that happen with that tag, uh, say, between two antennas. So if a tag is seen by antenna 1, you may not care about it just being seen by antenna 1, but you want to know that it had transited between antenna 1 and antenna 2. And because then there is a sequence of events happening by that tag from, tag one, uh, from antenna 1 to antenna 2, then send the report to the database saying, hey, this tag transited those two antennas. So I'm going to show you a sample of that in just a minute as well. Just uh, that'll elaborate on a little bit better than my explanation so you can see that in action. Uh, so finally, the last thing here is uh, we've added some new features to the custom fields that actually allow you to tie other tags into a single tag read based on these custom tag events. Uh, a lot of our customers have been requesting a way of tying a badge scan, so a, a employee's badge scan, to, say, uh, product tags that they may be checking in or checking out of some stock room. So using our custom fields feature from Clearstream 4.0, we built on that a little bit so that you can actually uh, take, grab a badge, in the simplest sense, grab a badge that's sitting in the field of view of one of the antennas and tie it to the part tags that are being scanned by that reader. And I'll show you uh, how that works in just a bit here as well as I jump into this demonstration. But it'll show you that you can uh, assign a badge to all of the tags that are being checked out, say, at that time, or assign a badge to all of the items that are being checked in. So you can capture both the employee information along with the tag information of the items with a single post to the database uh, rather than having to post them to separate tables. So in the past, we've said, well, you can filter the badge scans to a badge table with a date timestamp. 
and you can filter the uh, item tags that are being checked in or checked out to an items checked in out table and then tie them together based on the date timestamp. Now we can, based on these tag events that are being reported by the portal, with the badge that happens to be in the field of view at that time to all of the tags that are being reported. So I'll go ahead and show you that. Uh, okay, so that's uh, actually it for the PowerPoint other than the question stuff. I'm going to hop out of this and I'm going to jump over to Clearstream 4.1. So let me go ahead and bring this up. Let me just make sure no questions come in just to make sure you guys can all hear me. I don't want to continue if there's any issues. Okay, so uh, we look good here. So here's Clearstream 4.1. This uh, screen looks very similar to what you guys have seen in the past if you've used Clearstream 4.0 or prior. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and actually set up a little demonstration with the virtual site survey tool to show you the features in action. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do <coughs> is actually configure a, um, let me do the environment first. So I'll go over to the virtual site survey. I'm going to config configure a very simple environment. I'm just going to do a single room with a single reader and a single antenna. So let's put this thing aim it here and a single tag container. Okay, so now here's our environment. We got our, our RFID reader. We have an antenna hooked up. This thing's just aiming in some direction. And then we have the item that we want to uh, scan in the environment. So once this gets turned on, it should scan as it's going in and out of this read range here. Now, the first thing I thought I'd do is show you this in action without any of the tag events for, that are supported in Clearstream 4.1 and show you what happens. So I have here my uh, <coughs> fixed, or my uh, asset or my package that I want to scan. I have everything set up in my environment. I'm going to move this over for the time being and configure that uh, reader to send tags to a database. So what I'll do is select the source to be RFID. I'm going to select the destination to be our Clearstream RFID sample database and send it to the RFID tag list table and then just add my reader to this configuration. I'm going to go ahead and hit add, add an emulated reader and the only thing I really want to do here is, is add an antenna uh, to, the, to this emulated reader. So I'm all done here. I have a fixed RFID emulated reader hooked up. I'm using that as my source uh, of tag data on the left hand side and on the right hand side I have my RFID tag list table that I have configured. So any tag that's read by this emulated reader, which we just hooked up in our environment, is sent to the RFID tag list. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to call it 2017 webinar. By the way, Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, so I'll go ahead and hit uh, save my project. <coughs> I have that saved. Now I have the database here open. This is the Clearstream RFID sample that's installed with uh, Clearstream. It's an access database. You can see my RFID tag list table is empty. It has no tag information in it. Uh, and that's the, t the table I'm sending tag information to. So let me go ahead and show you this. Now this is going to run as it would in Clearstream 4.0. If I hadn't set up anything on the database side, uh, and I, if I have the reader set to a simple append mode. So I'm going to go ahead and start the reader. When I start the reader, you'll see that the uh, read zone goes green. Now again, I have no tags in my access database. There's nothing in here. So I'm going to go ahead now and move the uh, item into the read zone of this uh, RFID tag and uh, this RFID reader. Now as you can see, there's a bunch of activity going on in the background. It's scanning that tag and it's posting that tag to our selected Clearstream database. I'll go ahead and stop this reader at this point. I'm going to go over to the database and just by this uh, item sitting in front of this antenna, it's being scanned by this virtual RFID reader many, many times and posting them to the access database. So what you'll see is if I go back to the access database and hit refresh, I just read that tag 320 times. And this is what you'll see in our actual RFID environment if you just leave the tag sitting in front of the RFID reader. You can see it posted to this database 320 times because it was just sitting there. <clears throat> uh, it's just getting scanned over and over again by that, by that reader. And you can see it's been posted here with all of these date timestamps as it was sitting in front of this, in this case, antenna one. Okay? So that may not be what we want though. You know, this thing was just sitting in front of this antenna, but we may only want to report it, you know, once or however many times. 
uh, as it's sitting there. We want to control that. Now, in the past, we've said, well, on the database side, you can definitely control that. You can set, you can make sure that the database isn't posting all of this tag information because nothing's changed with that item. You know, it's still sitting in in front of Antenna One, still being read by that. Nothing has really changed. But now, with Clearstream 4.1, you can control it at the reader level. So what I'm going to do here is actually go ahead and clear out my access database. Start this from scratch. So I'm going to clear that out. You can see I have no tags again. Uh, on the uh, environment side, I just want to move this out of the way. And now I'm going to go ahead and change some of the settings of this reader using the new tag event and moderated tag read feature of 4.1. So go ahead and open up the reader configuration again. I'm going to jump to the tag settings options. This is where the configuration are done. It's down here on the bottom, tag events with moderated tag read. So let's say I want to make it so that I only read an item as it's sitting in front of the antenna, let's say once every five seconds. But I don't want to report it because it's sitting there so many times. I just want it once every five seconds. So that way I know every five seconds this thing's being scanned. It's sitting in front of there, and I'm recording that in the database. And you can set this to whatever you'd like. It could be once a day. Maybe you only want to scan it and get a recording of that item sitting in front of the antenna once a day. Uh, but that's all configurable by you. Basically, all you need to do is say, I want to turn this feature on, and I'm going to set it to five seconds. Now, this is in milliseconds, so I'm going to do 5,000. <clears> I'm going to report when the tag is visible, and that's the only thing I'm going to change just to show you the difference here. And so now if I close this, uh, save my project, and power this reader up, now I'm going to take this item, let me try to get these things, um, you can see both of them. I'm going to take the uh, RFID tag list table, which is currently empty, and take the virtual environment. Now I'm going to just sit this thing in front of here. What you'll notice is now as I, re as I refresh the database in the background, I'm only getting a tag read once every five seconds. You see now I have two. We count down five seconds again. Now I have three. If I count down five seconds again, now I have four. So you can see I'm controlling how many times I'm getting this tag posted to the database uh, and entered into the uh, database once every five seconds based on that moderated tag read. So I'm drastically reducing the amount of reads I'm getting to the database at the reader level so I don't have to make any changes to the database. And I'm just getting that once every five seconds. So that is the simplest setup. Let's go ahead and move this out power this down, and we can check our database. So in that time frame, we only got a total of what looks like seven records posted to the database because I just moderated that tag event, the new tag event, down to once every five seconds. So every five seconds, I will get a tag read. And again, you can set that to whatever you'd like. Clearstream will only report the tag to the database based on your setting there. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and clear out this uh, database again and show you some more things that we can do with this. So my database is clear again. Uh, we have our uh, item back out of the read zone of uh, our virtual environment. I'm going to go back to the reader settings here. Now one thing I want to do here is actually go ahead and uh, change this. I'm going to turn on this feature called report tags again only after not visible. I'm going to turn that on without changing anything else. We go ahead and save this. So now, now what this does is I'm going to power up my reader. The reader's powered up. Go ahead and set this up again so you guys can see. Here's my access database, which is currently empty. Here's my tag. Now what I set there is to report the tag again only if it's not visible. So maybe if the tag is just sitting in front of the antenna, I don't care to read it again because I know nothing has changed with that item. It's still it's still just sitting there. And I only want to get another tag read if it goes away and then comes back. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this thing back in front of the read zone of that, an that antenna, refresh our database, and now what you'll see is I have a single tag read for that item. And no matter what now, I'm going to only get a single tag read for that item because it's still sitting in front of the, the antenna because I don't I, I told Clearstream to say, you only tell me about this thing if it goes away for some for that length of time and comes back. So I'm only going to get a second read it if that happens. So you can see as I'm hitting re refresh here, I'm not getting any additional tag reads to the database. It's just 
because the, the item now has to leave before Clearstream reports it again. So as I hit refresh, you can see no additional tags. So what I need to do is go over to the simulator here and move this outside of the read zone of that antenna. Now again, it's obviously outside of the field of view of the antenna. I'm not getting any tag reads of the database. I just know the last one that I got was at this time uh, for this item on antenna one. So I'm going to leave it outside. Now this is based off of the timeout setting that you have. So I have it set to five seconds. So this thing needs to leave the field of view of the antenna for at least five seconds. So it's been five seconds now. So if I go back into the field of view here and put it back into the read zone, I should get a second tag read. Of course, I didn't here. As always, these are <laughs> sneak peeks. I have issues. Up oh, there it is. So now I got that second tag read. This refresh is probably a little slow. So I got that second tag read to the database, <coughs> and it's posted as another tag read. So I'm controlling, again, the number of tag reads that are posted to the database based on telling Clearstream to say, hey, don't report this tag unless it goes outside of the field of view of the antenna for at least five seconds. Let's go ahead and try that again. So I'm going to move it out, let it sit outside of the field of view for five seconds. I have two tag reads for that item in the database. It's been five seconds, so I'm going to take this item and I'm going to go ahead and move it back into the field of view of the antenna. And now if I go back to the database and hit refresh, I got a third tag read. So you can see I'm only getting tag reads if this thing leaves the field of view and then comes back to the antenna. So it's another additional step that you can control the amount of tag data that's being reported by these fixed RFID readers to your database. So let's take this a little bit further. So I'm going to go ahead and power down my reader. I'm going to go over to the database. I still, again, only have those three uh, tags. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, delete all my tag information. So my database is empty again. Now let's take this a step further. We're going to go back over to configure. We're going to go to the readers. <coughs> um, now one thing, additional thing I want to do is actually report when this tag is not visible. So I not only want to know when it came into the field of view of the antenna, I want to know when it left. So all I have to do is turn on report tag no longer visible. I'm going to go ahead and hit close. And this again is based off the timeout setting, so it has to be outside the field of view for that five seconds. So I save my project. I'm going to uh, power up the reader. My reader is powered up. My database is currently empty. I just refresh it. My database is empty. Uh, item is sitting here on the, the shop floor, and it's outside of the antenna. I'm going to put it inside of the antenna. If I hit refresh, I immediately get a tag scan because I have tag visible as a tag event that's being reported to the database. I'm not getting any tag reads because it has to leave again before it comes back, before I can scan it again. It has to leave the antenna for five seconds and come back and be scanned again. So I'm not getting any tag reads. You can see by me hitting refresh here on the database. But now I'm going to take this item and move it outside of the field of view of the antenna. Well, again, it's based off of that timeout, so it's going to take about five seconds before it's, the antenna knows it's gone. So I'll refresh my database, and there it is. So there I got another tag read. You can see the peak RSSI is zero because it didn't technically read that tag. You can see the tag event that's reported and actually is customizable by you. You can see the two events. It was tag visible at 10.26.24, and then at 10.26.57, the tag was no longer visible, and it's reported to the database. And so you can see I got those two tag reads for that single item. If I were to go back over to the environment, in five seconds, I'm going to go back in. I'm going to go ahead and hit refresh. I got my tag read. You can see it's got the RSSI here for the virtual environment. It came over with the tag event of new tag visible, which again, you can customize and change that. Uh, and then if I go ahead back, I'm not getting any tag reads because it hasn't left. If I go back here and move this thing out after that timeout time, Go ahead and refresh my database. And there you can see the tag is no longer visible. So I'm recording how long the item has been in front of that antenna and getting two tag events. So you can see here, just from these settings that I've set, you can drastically control how much the tag data that's being sent to your database as opposed to some of the say the stuff you've done in Clearstream 4.0 or prior. In those, you'd be setting up these type of rules on the database side. Uh, 
you know, checking the logic of your database or the, the data in the database before you post the tag. Now this is all controlled at the reader level in Clearstream and reporting those tags to the database. Okay, so maybe we'll do that one more time. Let's take it in. We're going to put that item in front of the, the antenna. Go ahead and hit refresh. We have a tag read, so we have new tag visible. And then if we go back and move this thing back away, we can go ahead and after that five seconds, we'll refresh our database. And now it's Clearstream reports that this tag is gone. So if we go ahead and hit refresh there. So I went in and out of the field of view of those antennas three times. In those three times, I got six uh, records posted to the database. Each one shows the state of that item. It showed up at this time, left at this time, showed up at this time, and left at this time. So you can see this would be very good for a setup where you may want to do keeping track of items as they come up to workstations, how long they've been there, uh, how long they're at that location, and getting those ta two tag events, and not getting a whole bunch of tag events as the tag is sitting there. So you can really control the tags as they're being reported to the database. Okay, so let's go ahead and now take this even further. I'm going to stop my reader. I'm going to clear out my database. Okay, my database is empty. My item has been removed from the antenna, and I'm actually, actually going to change that environment around a little bit for this one. So now let's go ahead and set it up so that, like what I talked about before, it, you, we can do a check-in, check-out scenario with custom tag events. So we get, we get it rather than a tag scanned or a tag no longer scanned, um, we can get a uh, check-in event and a check-out event. So what I'm going to do is uh, let's modify the environment first. So I'm going to set up a stock room. Let's move these guys around. We'll uh, subtract some floor space. We'll make a stock room. Okay, so let's just say on the right-hand side here we have a stock room. We want to keep track of the things as they're going in and out of here. So we're going to go ahead and label this stock room. Uh, maybe this is the shop floor. So showroom shop floor. So here's the shop room and now we want to keep track of items as they go in and out of this, uh, this stock room. So I'm going to add an additional antenna to our reader here. Okay. You can do as many antennas as you'd like. In real life you probably want some additional antennas. So let's put this thing on the in the side of the stock room for the time being. Okay. So what I want to do here is I don't care, like, if you have a stock room set up and you have some items in the stock room, you know, the item may get scanned by the antenna that's inside of the stock room, but you don't necessarily care about that because it hasn't done anything. It's, it's just sitting there being scanned. You know it's in the stock room. You know you have it in inventory. So let's not report on it to the database. You really want to report on it if it goes like this, through these two read zones onto the shop floor, and then maybe to, through these two read zones back into the stock room. That, to you, is a tag event. That's the event. It has moved through the portal. So we're going to go ahead and configure that with our custom tag event. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, here's my stock, my uh, area. I have antenna two is actually the, we'll do the check in antenna, and antenna one is the check out. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over here. I'm going to go back to our reader configuration. First thing is I need to add an additional antenna. This one is the check, or uh, let's do this one is out. And this antenna is in. Okay, so I'm just naming my antennas based on where they're located in our virtual environment. Now let's go ahead and configure our custom events. <coughs> so I'm going to turn off. I don't want to report the tag if it's visible. I also don't want to report the tag if it's no longer visible. And I don't care about this here because we're not reporting on these anyway. So I'll turn all of those off. I'm, I, if the tag is just sitting in front of one antenna, don't tell me about it. I don't care. I want to know if it goes past the two antennas. So now I'm going to go ahead and if I left it actually as this, I would never get a tag event to the database because I've turned off all the events. The, the, the tag as it's going in front of these things is technically being scanned by the reader, but it wouldn't be reported because I've turned off everything. So this is probably not a useful setup in any um, case other than maybe if you wanted to do alerts on the reader and you didn't care about capturing data, uh, you could set something like this up. But I'm going to go ahead now and configure a custom event. And my events, are, there's going to be two events. The first one 
will be checked in. Check in, and the other one will be check out. Okay, and these events will be made up of a, of a, each of a different sequence. There'll be two sequences. The antenna field equals, and in the case of check in, it's going to be out, and then it's going to be in. Both of these will be equals. The check out is going to be the reverse. It's going to be antenna equals in and then out. So these values here just match what my antenna names are. So it's basically saying if the tag hits these two sequences, that the antenna that read it is equal to in, followed by the antenna that read it equals to out, my event, we're going to fire an event there called check out. In reverse, for the check-in, it's the other way. If antenna out reads it, followed by antenna in, then we're going to report a tag event called check-in. So now let's just make sure I have out and in as my tag that has to match these values here. But I'm all set. So now I have two custom events that I'm reporting this tag on. It has to go through the, it has to go past these antennas in some certain order before it's reported to the database. Let me go ahead and close. I'm going to save my project. Uh, just double check the database again. It's uh, empty. Go over to our beautiful shop floor here. Let me make this so you guys can see it. So now, oh, I have to power my reader up. I'm going to start this up. I'll hit start. Here's my shop floor. Here's my database. Okay. So now this item can be sitting in front of this antenna, but we don't care about that. So as I'm refreshing this, there's no tag read to the database because the tag hasn't done anything. So this is another common setup that we have with Clearstream is these check-in, check-out scenarios. And in the past, if there was an antenna on the inside of a, of a stock room, and let's say it was a small stock room, the tags in that stock room could be scanned, you know, hundreds of thousands of times as they're just sitting in front of that stock room because it's a small stock room and they have the antenna set up to full power. Now, in the past, we would say, okay, well, that data is getting posted to the database, but it's really just updating the database with the current state of the item. But you're still hitting the database all those number of times. You're updating the database, the database with that information. You don't really care about it because it hasn't changed states. It hasn't gone through that sequence of events of going through the portal. So with this, you're actually controlling that. You're controlling that it has to go through that sequence of events before it's reported to the database. So let's see that. So again, the database is empty. I'm going to take this item, and I'm just going to go through these two read zones here. So it goes through. So it's been scanned by this antenna, followed by that antenna. If I go over to the database and refresh it, you can see I got a single tag read based on those two antennas that just scanned that tag. And it's been marked in the database, uh, which I have mapped to the tag event field, with the checkout events that I customized in my custom events area. You can see it posted that. So I just customized this to whatever I needed to. Now again. I actually I haven't gone through a lot of this, but the field mappings, I posted that, that tag event to this tag event field. You guys could post this to whatever you'd like in your database. You could have a current state of, uh, of your item field in the database, uh, which you would map the custom event to. So it would post current state of your field is current state. It posts the tag event to that current state field called checkout or checked out or whatever you want. So now if you take that in reverse, we'll go back through the portal. It hits the custom events because it was read by both of these antennas. And if I refresh the database, I now have two rows in my database. And you can see it was checked out at uh, you know, 1036. It was checked back in at 1037. We're not getting tag reads if it's just sitting here. If I can refresh this, I'm only getting, I only have those two tag reads. It's only if it goes through the sequence of events through those two antennas. And you can customize this to whatever you'd like. I mean, I just the pr most common is probably going to be two antennas or maybe four antennas based on what you have. But it really could be a lot of different things. It could be antennas. It could be readers that read the tag and things like that. You can um, string together as much of that sequence as you'd like to uh, capture that data to the database. Okay. So let's take this again a step further. Let's say we want to track that who takes this item out of the stock room. So I'm going to put the closest tag container I have to a person. I'm going to say this is my employee. I'm going to switch the type to be a shirt. So here's my employee. We don't have a person in this emulator. But I have a question here, so I'll make sure. Okay, 
I'll get to your questions just at the end of the uh, webinar. I just want to make sure that everybody can hear me. I don't want any technical difficulties as I'm going through this. Okay, so here's my, my employee, and here's the item that he happens to be checking out. He or she happens to be checking out. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, the one thing I need to do is set a uh, different tag. So I'm going to call this guy. This, this guy's employee badge is B100. Okay, so this EPC value on the tag starts with B. And this one is just whatever it is, that long value you already saw here. Uh, but this, the employee badge starts with a B. So let's go ahead and make sure that we track that that guy took out that item. So I'm going to go ahead now and stop my reader again. I'm going to go to the database. I'm going to clear it out. Go ahead and clear that out. So now we have nothing. Um, now what we can do is go back to our reader configuration. <clears throat> We're going to uh, configure in the custom field area an additional field to our reader. So we're going to go ahead and hit add a field. We're going to name this field badge. We're going to say that this badge, and try to follow along with me because this is a little tricky to explain, but I'm going to, I'm going to add a field to the database, so every, or to the reader. So every time the reader captures this information, the tag information, you can customize additional fields that the reader captures. There's a standard set of default fields, the EPC, a date timestamp, the signal strength, and things like that. Uh, but with clear, as of ClearStream 4.0, you can add custom fields, which can be static values. Maybe every time a tag is scanned, you want to capture you know, the value 1, 2, 3 in your database. You can do that through custom fields. Um, I'm going to configure that. <coughs> excuse me. This reader has an additional field called badge. I'm going to say that this badge comes from a field called, uh, from the field EPC, but it's going to be from a moderated tag. So it's going to be from a tag that's sitting in front of the field of view of one of these antennas. It's, it's kind of a, um, within the timeout setting, it's sitting in front of those. I'm going to turn on that it's from those list of tags that the reader currently knows about. The next thing I want to do is set a condition for this. The condition is the tag starts with a B. So basically, this means populate the badge field of the reader <coughs> from a moderated tag, a tag that's in memory for that reader, if it starts with B. And that's going to be this badge value. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this and save it. <clears throat> the next thing I need to do is make sure that I map this badge field to a field in the database. So you can see here I have the new field badge. And I'm going to go ahead and set that as a mapped field. So this badge field is mapped to the user field in the destination. So prior to this, every tag that was posted to our access database, that, bad, that user field was blank. It wasn't posted with anything. So now what I can do is, now that I have it mapped and it's populated from a moderated tag, a tag that's sitting in memory of the reader, I'm going to uh, post that to the user field. So let's go ahead and save my project here. I'm going to go over to the start stop. I'm going to power up my readers. Now I only can move one item at a time. There's a couple limitations with the simulator to show you. This one, this is actually a cool one to see in, you know, if you're actually have a portal set up with a badge tag on a user. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this uh, item. The, the, I'm going to move the employee into the read zone of this. Now imagine he has this thing and he's carrying it. Now there's no, da there's no data being posted to the database because, again, there's no tag sequence being hit. As well as this badge is not being read because it's going to be assigned to this item. But now let's move this item out through the portal. It goes through the two read zones. I'm going to refresh my database. Hit that. There it goes. Okay, so you can see it read the item, and it read it with the badge ID of B100 because this guy's tag is sitting in this read zone here. So it's capturing that this employee is sitting in the read zone, and it's a moderated tag in the read zone, and so it's assigning it to this package during that custom sequence event event there. So if I go back through the read zone, now I will get the read. Uh, for the check in, so you can see what I've captured here. I've captured this item was checked out. Was checked out by employee B100 at 10:42:26, and then it was checked back in by that same employee B100 at 10:42:57. So you can see I can capture this tag information by it being in the read zone here. Uh, and then send that with the other tag information. One thing to note for this setup here, for anybody that's uh, 
may have noticed. This can actually still be read by both. It's going to cause a sequence of events if I go through here and then through here. So I will capture a badge 100 based on that. So you can see here I have badge 100 has been checked out. So this guy's checked out. Um, if I go ahead, what I can do there is actually go back to my setup. I'll stop this read. And all I need to do is add a filter. This is new 4.1 as well. We have a not like filter V percent. This basically says any reader here that <coughs> uh, reads, this reader that reads, as it reads tags, don't send any tags that start with V percent as the EPC. So this would limit that from happening. That'll turn off uh, this, this item from ever being scanned through the read zone and report it as its own tag. It's going to require that it's this item here being checked in or checked out. Okay, so I think that's everything I wanted to show you guys today for ClearStream 4.1. Uh, is it exci as exciting for all of you as it was for me to show you guys? So let me jump back over to the PowerPoint. And before we jump into questions, as always, I like to mention that for anyone that would like to trial ClearStream RFID on um, actual equipment. We do have a limited number of uh, ClearStream kits available. The kits come with a come in a ClearStream box that has everything you need to get up and running, the fixed RFID reader, uh, and two ant I believe they come with two antennas, uh, the software, and as well as they even come with some sample tags. So we have a limited number of those available. So if you'd like to reach out to us or one of your resellers uh, to check on the status of those, uh, those are generally good ways to get up and running and trial fixed RFID. You can also use the emulator that you saw today. There's no restrictions on the emulator. You can use it as long as you'd like within ClearStream. Uh, if you download the software with fixed actual equipment, there is a time frame uh, limit on how long you can run the readers. Uh, but I just, just like to mention that some people like to test the hardware, uh, and the uh, kit is a good way to go. So with that, uh, if you guys have any questions, I will open up the question panel here. Uh, use your question panel if you have any questions. I have a question here. Okay, question here. Uh, does the leave event work with a reader set up on a GPI timer? If between timed reads the tag doesn't move, will CS think that the tag left because the reader stopped reading? Uh, it's a very good question, and in fact, it, it won't report that tag. Within the duration of that rear running for the timed event, um, it would it would have to go through the sequence. Otherwise, the tag's not going to be reported. So if you trip a read through a GPI event, so motion sensor, light sensor, button, or something like that, and the tag doesn't go from the in to the out state or the out to the in state, it won't be reported to the database. <clears throat> the clear stream moderated tags that are kind of sitting in memory have to go through that full sequence before they're reported to the database. Um, so the answer there is no, you wouldn't have to. If you have a, a reason, actually, of why you would want to report it when the, when the GPI stops, uh, let us know. If you want to shoot us an email or reach out to us uh, after the webinar, um, we'd be glad to talk with you on that. But it, uh, currently, it would have to go through the full sequence that you have configured in the reader setup. Uh, question here, as always, there are a couple of these actually just popped up. Uh, when will this be available? We're looking to release this in January, um, so keep an eye out on your um, uh, the emails that we sent, send out when it's when it will be posted to our website. Uh, as always, if you are a current user and you would like to trial these features, maybe it's something that you are de in desperate need of for your setup, uh, please just reach out to us. We can get you a link to it. Uh, we do have a number of people trialing the uh, software now. Uh, with great success. So if you do want to, just reach out to us. I'll have the contact information up in just a second. Um, we would be glad to get you that link. Any other questions? We've answered everything for you guys today. OK, great. Well, uh, feel free to send them on over while I bring up the contact information here and while I'm talking, if you have any questions. Um, OK, so here's our contact information. Um, 
please reach out to us if there's anything maybe I didn't go over today that you, that you needed more uh, information on. Or anything as you're trialing the software, because we do encourage anyone that hasn't downloaded ClearStream or have, hasn't tried anything and thinking of using fixed RFID to go to our website, website at clearstreamrfid.com and download the free trial. You can trial everything I showed you here today uh, that uh, I showed you, and you can trial in the virtual environment or if you have fixed RFID equipment, you can do that. The question just popped up. What fields are available in the custom custom event fields? Antennas only, parsed values? Uh, that's another good question. Uh, all of the fields that are available there should be anything that you have added to the reader. So there will be all of the um, all of the static fields that are included in ClearStream. So it can be reader name, antenna name, uh, RSSI, uh, signal strength value, the date, time, stamp, um, any one of those, as well as any of the custom fields that are added. So the, uh, you mentioned here parsed value. Yeah, so those parsed values should be included as um, data that you can use in your custom events. So yep, you can add those to the, uh, the custom events area. Really just any field that's available for that reader, whether it be the static fields or your own custom fields. Okay, any other questions? Okay, uh, keep them coming if, if you can. Um, so here's our contact information. As always, just reach out to us if you have any further questions. Uh, or if you have any feedback on the webinar today, if there's anything you would like us to show you all in the future, we'd be glad to get that feedback as well. So with that, uh, I thank you all again for joining us on today's webinar. I hope everyone had a happy new year. And we look forward to seeing you again on our future webinars. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.